Hi, this is a, uh, a video introducing um, steel beam design and also introducing the uh, Blue Book by Tassa Steel, the SCI and the BCSA, which is a great design resource. So, um, what is this video about? Well, firstly, uh, what am I going to include in relation to uh, beam design? Where it's going to cover uh, design resistances of restrained and unrestrained steel beams. Sorry, this this video is just one of a few, so the others are going to be covering these things. Uh, it's going to cover deflection, which for the I'm just going to assume uh, the that the UK National Annex. Uh, relating to brittle finishes, that is that the deflection needs to be limited, to, live load deflection needs to be limited to span over 360 applies. The Eurocode has an incredibly sensible comment that it's that the deflection of steel beams should be specified for each project and agreed with the client. That's, that's very good. Uh, in reality, uh, many steel beams are designed to support uh, brittle finishes, that is plastered walls, that kind of thing. So uh, this is a reasonable assumption. Uh, we're going to look at shear, uh, the design shear resistance and also combined high shear with, uh, which creates a, a need to reduce the bending, bending resistance moment. Uh, that's what's in. What's uh, excluded? Well, there's so many things that are excluded because you can only fit so much into a, a very short video. So uh, this is not a very common condition. Uh, the next three things are important, but too complex for a short um, short video. And finally, web bearing and buckling, that's easily carried out using the blue book, but again is excluded from uh, these videos. So let's have a think about what these uh, videos are about. They're about simply supported steel beams carrying uniformly distributed load. So, well, this, um, this photograph is a good example showing simply supported steel beams. Here are some with bolted end plates and here's one with a fin plate, here's another with a fin plate and uh, here's some sketches showing some bolted end plates. It's simply an end plate bolted to the end of a UB, as uh, welded to the end of a UB and bolted to the flange or perhaps to the web of a sporting column. Fin plates, uh, this time the plate is welded to the supporting column and the beam is brought up to the plate and uh, bolted to it. Uh, these, this simply supported form of connection is cheap and commonly used uh, particularly in buildings where the overall lateral stability is provided by for instance reinforced concrete cores or by uh, steel bracing. So the next thing we need to look at is um, what we think might govern during the design. So if we know what we think might be a problem, we can look at that first. So uh, for a typical beam, there's the, uh, the span L, UDLW, the bending moment to the L squared over eight. So M is directly related to L squared. For shear, that's related to the span on its own, just L, and deflection, uh, we use this this formula for UDL. You can find that in um, plenty of books. Fiona Cobb is, finds its way onto a lot of engineers' desks. I make a good good use of this one. I think it's a great, concise uh, read. So this deflection formula shows that deflection uh, relates to the uh, span to the power of four. So if we double the span, what happens to M, V and D? Well, if we double the span, the moment is increased not by a factor of 2, but by a factor of 4. The shear is doubled as the span is doubled. The deflection, 2L to the power of 4, is increased by 16-fold. And what if we were to halve the span? Okay. Well, the bending moment reduces by... Uh, a factor of four, the shear just by a factor of two, and deflection, it only increases by a factor of um, 
it in, sorry, it increases by a factor of 16. That's a massive reduction in deflection. So the deflection is actually quite sensitive. And this, this shows that um, if you have problems with deflection, the key thing to think about is the span. Right, so what's likely to govern? Well, bearing in mind this effect, if you've got a long span, I'd definitely be expecting the uh, deflection to be the, the biggest problem. For shorter spans, typically these are sized on bending. Uh, and now we need to have a think about uh, shear. Right. Well, uh, let's get that out of the way. Uh, universal beam sections and column sections are um, the kind of uh, robust. Uh, they take the knocks. They're designed so that they can be bolted to the webs and flanges, so that you can be so that you can weld to both. They need to um, get through cutting and fabrication, transportation, uh, craneage and direction uh, without deforming or, or struggling. So it's for all these reasons, webs are, are generally sized uh, on the larger side and perhaps larger than is technically required for uh, to carry shear forces. And so for all of these reasons, uh, when I'm thinking about uh, what's likely to govern, for almost all spans, shear is not likely to be a uh, governing factor, uh, whether the span's short or long. That said, let's have a little look at uh, the way that shear affects. Um, shear is affected by the loading, because this is an important, uh, important concept, because when we have a a high shear load, a high shear force, then uh, we may have to reduce the moment capacity of a section. Okay, so let's have a look at a UDL. In the shear force and bending moment diagrams, it's clear that you never get the case where there's a high bending moment with a high shear force. Either it's high moment, low shear, or low moment, high shear. So that generally is a case that we don't have to worry about. At combining shear and bending. But with point loads, slightly different. The point load creates a shear force along the length of the member whose value remains the same even though the sign changes. And so where the bending moment peaks at the centre, it's quite reasonable and you can see that uh, the shear force is also at its maximum. So bearing in mind what we've looked at before, that is that for the shorter spans, the shear force doesn't reduce as fast as moments and deflections. It could be that for a short span, you're going to end up with some higher shear forces uh, than you can cope with. So uh, the upshot of all of this is beware short spans and high point loads when it comes to shear forces. Great. What are we going to look at now? We're going to look at deflection. Hmm. Right. This is the deflection formula for a UDL and uh, what I'd like to do is rearrange this formula so that I can find I. I'm going to make I the subject of the formula. So I'm transposing it and I know that E, which is the um, elastic modulus of um, steel, is 210. So the I required is this lot. However, I also know that uh, I'm going to limit my deflection for a typical beam with brittle finishes to span over 360. What else do I know? Well, I also know that uh, it's very easy to calculate the bending moment due to the live load UDL. It's just WL squared over 8. Okay, well, I'd like to use both of those, um, both of those in, my, uh, in this equation here. So I'm going, to, I'm going to add them in. Here we go, I've added in my... WL squared over 8, which is, I'm going to replace this with an M, and then my D I've replaced with a span over 360, and that all works out to give me ML over 5600. Mm, okay, well that's fairly useful. I can make it more useful because the units are not great. If I change this equation so that I input my bending moment due to live load in kilonewton meters, the length in millimeters, then ML over 56 gives me my required second moment of area around the strong axis 
in centimeters to the fourth and that's good because centimeters to the fourth are the units used in the blue book and other section tables well uh, so much for uh, some kind of initial pointers over the design of steel beams now we need to consider the blue book itself there are several ways to access the blue book online and uh, I'll show the way that I generally use and that is to go to Google type in steel construction info uh, when I search for that I get a range of results and if I click on steel construction dot info uh, I guess I could go straight to the blue book but if I click on steel construction dot info that gets me to uh, the home page for a, a, a fabulous range of resources on steel construction uh, uh, really I'd recommend uh, going through through this site if you've got the time uh, down the key resources on the left hand side uh, there is a link to the blue book and when I click on that that comes to uh, the blue book web page <clears throat> here there's a, uh, a video which is well worth watching it's only five or ten minutes long uh, the uh, down on the left hand side there's a link to download a PDF of the blue book and underneath that is a section on the interactive blue book which is what I'm interested in and if you click on this link here it'll take you to the home page of the blue book this is what the home page of the blue book looks like you can see that it covers a wide range of steel sections and um, actually it covers more than that it also covers here we go some uh, information for connections and explanatory notes right so if I go to universal beams I could have gone to any of the sections you can see that the blue book provides information uh, not just on dimensions and properties but a wide range of calculated resistances so this is how strong different beams are in different conditions so let's just briefly look at uh, for instance the section properties of some UBs if I was to look at 305 by 165 by 40k UB, I've got its, most of its dimensions. I've got some useful properties here if I'm trying to work out its uh, section classification. <clears throat> got some useful information for detailing there. And then here's the crucial stuff. This is the IY and then IZ. So I can work. I know what the second moment of area is about its strong axis and its weak axis, radius of gyration, WL, the elastic modulus, section modulus, and W plus, the plastic section modulus, and then finally a couple of um, a couple of properties that relate to lateral torsional buckling, and finally the area of the section. Let's move on to a, another page in the blue book, and this is. The buckling resistance moment uh, for S355. There's similarly a page for S275. So for the same beam and for different uh, effective lengths running along the top here and then different bending moment diagram shapes I can find the uh, buckling resistance moment. Uh, and finally just to illustrate some of the useful information on connections here is a, a section on fillet welds. Uh, this is a 6mm fillet weld and you can see that it's got a, a resistance, a longitudinal resistance and a transverse resistance. Uh, that's, uh, that's a really useful lookup table for connection design. Uh, that's the end of the video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it interesting and uh, uh, be sure to see the next couple of videos which deal with uh, laterally restrained and laterally unrestrained steel beams. Cheerio!